Welcome back to the final installment of our conversation with local school district superintendents about the state of cyber schools in the Valley. It definitely, uh, again, just like uh, uh, Kathy just mentioned again, at Mount Carmel, here, here's a difference at Mount Carmel. One mill is $70,000 at Mount Carmel. To my colleagues in the room, one mill is a lot more in other places. So it, it, at Mount Carmel, we, we had to raise 2.45 mills this year. So to add to your question, how are we going to combat that? At Mount Carmel area, cut programs. Um, we may, if a football team needs uniforms, we may have to wait three years. If the band needs new instruments, we may have to wait five more years because we can't afford it. Um, so I think, you know, my board has tasked me with, you got to decrease that number. So again, we're trying to sell ourselves, just like all our local districts here, try to sell our programs, why it's advantageous. But in the end, the parents paying anyway, because we've got to raise our taxes. That's the only place at Mount Carmel area um, where we would try to recruit recoup some of that cost of, of outside cyber schools. But again, what hurts us is our low millage rate. Again, I, I can't combat at other schools. A mill might bring in one hundred sixty, two hundred thousand dollars at Mount Carmel. It's seventy. Right. What you just said, and I'm sure nobody will answer this question or say it, but it's pretty easy for a school board to say get rid of this money or get rid of or try to make this money up. But you guys are the ones that have to sit and face the staff and and make these decisions, and then at the end of the day, when it's when it's put out that this program's cut, this program is cut. Each one of you guys are the ones that. Take blame, I guess, if you want to say for that. So, I would think we take the heat from that, but I think all of our boards are on board with the decisions that are made. Um, it's these decisions. Any any time we make cuts, and Southern East Columbia has made cuts over the last two years to get our budget in line. Um, and part of our issue is increasing cyber schools costs. Um, but you know, it, it's something that you know weighs on us. But it's it's all it's a, it's an effort. And um, you know, I think I think our boards are definitely on board. They don't like to make cuts. I know my board um, is all pro education, and, and they want to do everything they can for kids. And I'm pretty sure everyone else's board is the same way. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a business, and when you sit in this seat, I know for me, this is the, really the first time that I think that I really understood. Running a school district is a business, and and it, and as any business, there's a bottom line, and you have to come to that bottom line. And those decisions are tough when you, when you have to make cuts, and you're 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 reducing the number of programs, and it's and it's usually the the fringe programs. We still have our core classes, our math, science, social studies, it's a lot of extra stuff that those are the things that really make kids want to come to school. Kids don't come to school for geometry. Not all of them. A lot more will come for band. They want to come. Oh, I have band lessons. Today. I'm definitely going to school. Um, I'm coming because I have track practice. They're so it's those fringe things that we have to maybe not eliminate, but cut back, and that hurts. You know, our, our students. So I mean, obviously, you can do a million of these sit downs like this, and you're pretty much all doom and gloom going into the future. But here's a question that uh, we started this to actually get responses from from all over the state and uh, how about consolidation has that ever been brought up consolidating some of these school districts and would that help that's been talked about for years I think you can go to uh, Virginia and Maryland they have the county schools and they find that in the long run it really is not save a lot um, line out would be very difficult we're 168 square 58 square miles who do we consolidate with do we go to Shemokin ship and go to Upper Dolphin, uh, whatever, um, that, that, that would be incredibly difficult. But I, we talk about the costs, and I, I, I know Cyber has fired back at some of my comments. I just offer them a challenge. This is my challenge. In Lime Mountain, we did our best not to raise taxes. In a very difficult time, where we have stimulus and all these kinds of funds, we're doing everything in our power to save taxpayer dollars. What can cyber schools do during these tough times? Why can't they step up and save some taxpayer dollars? That's where I'm at. And I'm willing to debate that with them and legislators any day. We did reach out to them and we got nothing. To, to add to what uh, David said, and uh, Alan brought this up earlier, 
this could be very simple if legislators just looked at it. If we offer our own cyber schools, they're mandated to go there first. Uh, you can't convince me that we're not doing a better job than the outside cybers. Um, I think legislators could make a, a big impact if they looked at legislation that would mandate if you ran your own cyber school, you can go there. If you don't run your own cyber school, parents can choose to go to outside cybers. But that would impact the budgets and keep kids here and dollars here. Thank you, Jason, for bringing that up. Um, that was one of the things that I wanted to mention. Kurt Sonny has, has a bill, and we've talked with uh, our local legislators about that bill, exactly that same proposal. Um, for, for Warrior Run, we probably have the, one of the smallest um, or the, the lowest cost for students. So with the, the governor coming out with his proposal of a flat fee across the state, that will benefit many of the colleagues around the state more than Wolf Warrior Run because our costs are kept low. So I think we, as district leaders, we have kept as much as we possibly can efficiency running. They have different contexts, different demographic sets that they are. But unfortunately, the way in which the, the new basic ed funding formula is out, we don't look at any additional funding that comes from the state to be able to um, offset costs. It really goes back on our locals. Um, so I guess that's part of the conversation. I've had conversations with uh, Representative Culver and Senator Gordner that we don't need additional money from the state. We need to look at the funding mechanism here that's going to benefit all districts. You don't have to add any additional money in the state budget for public education for a year or two because you can find this already that's here. And so if districts are allowed to bring those cyber kids back and use the cost, they have where you run our cost for an inside cyber student is about $2,000, so we're about a quarter of what we would be outside um, for a regular student. I don't need additional money from the state for at least a couple of years, and we should cover our costs. So then I guess the question is, and you're probably the one to answer this, but why do they, uh, why won't they listen to this or, or even make a move on this? I'll take all that off the hot seat. <laughs> Follow the money. Uh, there's, and, and, it, and it's not the lobbyists, the lobbying power. We don't have the ability to get out and lobby. Uh, at Light Mountain, we don't have a curriculum coordinator. That's our leader principals and leader teachers. I mean, we, we, we're trying to save money. We can't send that down there. We can't put advertisements out that uh, we're free education. Uh, <laughs> Just, I've always been told since a young man, nothing's changed. Follow the money. Uh, and I just think the millions and millions and millions in their coffers allow them a very big political stick. And Will districts, as sadly, because I've seen it now, pop up in different places, are districts going to start competing with each other for students? I'm, I'm not going to. I have my opinions, and I'm not comfortable yet. I, I think, I think, um, unfortunately, um, some people would argue dichotomously about cyber schools as we're starting to advertise. Some public schools are advertising against other public schools, and I have some real issues with that. That's. What, I mean, are they sort of? I mean, is it trickling down to the effect where you know, try to survive and start compete with each other? I think it's an issue where. We we're trying to build programs to keep our own kids. And in that case, because of choice, kids from other districts can come in. Um, can they play sports in those other districts then? Is going to be the question? If, if, they, if they come as, and it depends on how the school is set up, if, uh, if they're set up where they become that school student. You guys might have 5,000 students. Well, here's the thing. It, it's, it's happening all over the place. I mean, schools are making CTE programs. It's students are going from Southern to other school districts to be part of that CTE program. Now, we're trying to evaluate are the costs of creating another program going to uh, benefit bringing those students back? Is it one or two students going to a Bloomsburg, a Central, or is it seven, eight, ten? And then it would be cost effective to make those programs. And it's, a, it's, we're, it's more of we're trying to create programs to keep our own students. So, but with that, so is there any kind of standards on that? I mean, so say you have your, your, your have four friends that go to Lime Mountain, but you live in Chicklemi and you want to go to Lime Mountain because your four friends go there. 
I mean, what are the standards set that you can't just pick up and go? And how does that affect taxes? Who paid? What are, what are the taxes on that? Is it is the Shiklini that, that taxpayer is still paid for the Shiklini kid to, for Shiklini, or they paid Lime Mountain, or because right now you can't just jump school districts, right? If you live in a certain area, you can't just go pick a school to go to. So how does that? I mean, it seems like it was gonna, it's going to get if it stays like this that they forced it to get really ugly between school districts all over. I think like if you look at career and technical education, yes, there are separate standards that drive career and technical education programs. And so if one school district offers a career and technical education program, legislation does require that or require us to allow that student to participate in that career and technical education program if it's not an opportunity we provide. Um, when you look at special education, many of us share students based on special education programs we offer. So Warrior Run may call Milton and say, I have a student that requires these services. We don't offer it. Would you please consider taking that child into the program? We do that. We do that for each other, and we simply charge a tuition cost. We don't overinflate tuition costs. We didn't build in administrative fees. We just charge a tuition cost. So from that perspective, we are sharing programs. But I like what you asked, Francis, because I think we should have more conversation about if I offer this program, would you be willing to send students so that we're not duplicating efforts? And it is a form of consolidation of sorts, is what you're suggesting. It is. And when you look at it from a career and technical education, is that a wise business decision? Jim said that. And I think sometimes we get lost in that translation. We have a $39 million budget approximately. That's a large business, right? We're the second or third largest employer in Northumberland, in, in Northumberland County. We're running large businesses. And at times, our decisions, although we don't like it, they're a business decision. You're looking at a $2.4 million loss. You know, Dr. Bendel and his board had to make a business decision. So yes, I do think there is some local competition for some of our programs. And now we have to sit down as a team and talk about how do we want to move going forward because it's moved more into a marketplace model. Well, that would seem like a better than going out and just trying to pull from all over the place. I mean, if you want to come here, come here. It just seems like it would get really messy all around the boards. And I know you don't want to start getting into that, but it just seems like it's going to get messy. Well, I agree with what uh, Dr. Keegan said. Public schools should be working together, not competing against one another. Because if we start using that model, we're no better than what we're talking about here in the cyber school. Correct. And then I'm done. Because we're not we're not competing about you know child education. We're competing right. about the right. dollars, and that's right. that's not fair. But it looks like that's happening. It is that's, happening across the region. We're yes. starting to see that happening. So like even in Mount Carmel, if somebody just doesn't want to go to Mount Carmel, and they. That, I guess the standard I was asking for is: is there a, is there a certain thing, or can you just say, hey, I don't like. Mount Carmel, I want to go to Chicklemi, or I want to go to Blind Mountain. Can you just jump in and go, or do you have? Does there have to be a program? Francis, Kathy, Kathy did address it. It's CTEs, current yeah. technical education. It just can't be for um, a regular student. They, they, they just the only place a a public school child that's just say in ninth grade can't decide if they're still living in Blind Mountain. Go. Okay, so that's what I that's what, okay. This is for career okay. and technical education right. programs. I'm not sure that's very clear in what's going on out there because I think it's kind of like a, I'll go here, I'll go that's there. That's fair. And and I I'm less. Alan just nailed it. That's, you could say it any better. And he, for lack of a better, I, when he spoke like that, it gives you goosebumps. That's what we're here for. But in Lime Mountain's case, we don't. We might not have near the issue because we're so rural and one or two of these schools that are doing the CTEs, they're 40 miles from us, but my brethren, they're close. A lot of mountain students aren't going to separate themselves and, and take an hour and 15 minutes to get to another place. Correct. Uh, Lone University runs some incredible programs and it's difficult for our kids because of our location. Um, so that's one area where we haven't seen in some of the other schools, I mean, yeah. my my bordering school district right here, I I feel, and, and I mean, you put billboards up in 
It just seems like school districts. Right. It just seems like a like better idea to get everybody together and talk about how you're going to do it than to just start going all over the place. And that's it's starting up. Friends, it's starting to pop up. I believe there have been some legislative efforts to push that kind of uh, competition uh, and allow parents to choose what school district they want their child to go to. Um, but generally, I don't think we we allow for that. Uh, curriculum tends to drive the needs. So as mentioned, special education program. Uh, at Mifflin Road, we have an ag program at our high school. Not everybody has that. So occasionally, we will get a request from a neighboring school district for a student to attend for, for the purpose of an ag curriculum. So that, that's a legitimate reason. Uh, but it's not driven emotionally. It's different than advertising it and saying, come here. Absolutely, absolutely. It's purposeful for the sake of the, of the student. So I guess at the end of the day with all of this and all the challenges that everybody is, let's just quick go around and everybody, what is the message that your district wants to put out? And again, I know collectively everybody's on the same thing, but for your districts, I, this will be seen by all of our coverage areas. So each district and we'll start over and see what's through. Thank you. So just real quickly, the three prongs, the business aspect of it, the rise in cost, the impact on taxpayers, that is what it traditionally is something that everybody can connect to, money. So that's a, it's a negative on all of our people. That impacts our cultural and political decisions that we all make locally, whether it has to do with staffing or programs, and ultimately, that does not help all of our goals, whether it's public ed or public cyber charters, all of us are supposed to be working to maximize the experience for students. The system right now is not doing that because students are being misled to receive an education that is not holistic in nature. And in doing so, it's actually something that our local communities are paying more for. <laughs> I have to follow that. Our, our, our message is, it's. I, I think this past year really has emphasized how well we do in public schools. Um, again, I'm looking at the glass half full, I think some amazing things happened this past year. And I just think with the legislation of the redos, I, I just think the realization is out there that the places they need to be, this is more than just money to me. Um, having <coughs> dysfunction in our families and, and in my own. And I know the importance of the help they get in schools. And that's that's where we're at. I mean, I, I believe that the legislators must understand there's failure in the, the cyber world and the online learning. And if we struggled with our online learners and there was constant contact and we had screen time. We were taught, and some of ours, probably half of half of our cyber kids went for because they didn't want to wear a mask, and they're coming back. But that's the true. That's the true message that I want people to understand. I think it's a shame that the issue has to do so much with funding. And I think it's it's obvious to all of us here that we're interested in seeing a new way of funding outside cyber schools and the concept of school choice. It just seems illogical that we would go to our taxpayers and ask them to fund the competition so that we can cut our programs. Uh, it just seems absurd. Uh, and the perception that is created is not well understood by your average taxpayer. It just looks like we're cutting things. Um, but uh, to us, we like to get back to having education simply be about kids and learning. Um, if the state is interested in operating alternate modes of education, and the state should find a way to pay for that. I'm not asking our taxpayers to cover it. I, I said it earlier, I, I think our taxpayer dollars should be going to our cyber school for those families and that should be mandated by the legislation. If you offer your own cyber school, then then come. Uh, you, you should be required to, to come to that your public school cyber school. Um, with that being said, I think we do a better job. Uh, they work with our kid. Uh, our teachers work with our cyber school students in house. They have opportunities to come into our labs. 
they uh, have opportunities for, for lunch, they have opportunities to be involved in extracurricular, you know, Shikalimi uh, High School Diploma. Uh, so I think, and, and I'm, I think all of us sitting around this table have those opportunities for families. So I urge families to call any one of us to schedule times to come in and talk and, and about coming back to your, your public school and, and experience their cyber program. Every one of my colleagues around here, myself included, we're here for kids, we're here for our staff, we're here for our community, and we spent the last hour talking about distractions that, that take our time, take our money and our resources away from these kids. So I would just emphasize that um, those that are considering cyber or other options to really be informed, know what's offered in the schools, know the quality of what's being offered in schools, and just ask questions. Um, to add to my colleagues, I appreciate everything they said. And one other thing I'd like to add is I would hope our legislators will start looking at uh, holding cyber schools to the same accountability as public schools are. There's so many things that they don't have to be held accountable to that we are, from academics to budget to uh, the, the list could go on and on. I, I would, I, that, that's all I would ask is, you know, besides everything that's already said, just hold us to the same accountability levels. So I guess what I heard Jim just say is talk about equity, you know, equity among us. You know, we all stood there Friday, March 13th at, you know, I remember at 2.57 saying to our faculty, I'm not really sure what's coming. And then at 3.01, we got notification that we were closing because of COVID. You know what? We rose up. Pennsylvania teachers and Pennsylvania administrators rose up. They've been telling us that, you know, we need to be in a competitive marketplace. Okay, we competitively marketed our programs. And it's something that all of us are really proud of. You've heard it over and over. Our staff, our administration, our boards of education truly care about their community. And so my message is give us a chance. Let us surround you with the support, the quality of education, the programs that every student in Pennsylvania deserves. Uh, hopefully Mount Carmel area residents are watching this and again I'd like to thank my colleagues uh, they, they did a great job today again I would encourage our learning community check out our main website we have a, a PowerPoint that's listed on there talking about more than what we talked about today looking at our budget numbers uh, we reviewed this during our July board meeting which is also found on our website Mount Carmel area spent nine million dollars this summer to upgrade overall air quality and ventilation uh, we have new rooftop HVACs we added bipolar ionization systems in our buildings schools are safe uh, all of our districts in this room proved last year uh, that we were able to do education in person uh, and we're going to do it again it looks like so again i encourage uh, mount carmel area students to enroll back at mount carmel area again if virtual or a cyber it fits your family needs reach out to myself or your building principal and we will set up a meeting immediately uh, to enroll your child into our own cyber school again tornado e-learning academy so we want to just say thank you to the Daily Item for organizing this. Uh, it's a tough topic, it's a deep topic, but we appreciate your efforts to getting this message out to, the, uh, to our uh, constituents.